Ever wonder if a $60 smartphone can be used as a daily driver with no compromise, all your apps and everything else that you do in any given day can be run with zero issue? Well this might be the phone for you. This is my review of the Blue R1 HD. To first begin, I'm just gonna run, run down the specs. So the Blue R1 HD has a IPS LCD capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 720p. Its size is 5 inches and it is protected with Corning Gorilla Glass 3. It's running Android 6.0 which is Android Marshmallow and the CPU is a quad core MediaTek MT6735 clocked in at 1.3 gigahertz. It does have um, 16 gigs of internal storage and 2 gigs of RAM, but these 16 gigs of internal storage can be upgraded via, mi via micro SD up to 64 gigs. Um, the primary camera, so the one in the back, is a 8 megapixel f2.0 camera with autofocus and LED flash. Um, it can shoot 1080p video up to 30 frames per second. And the secondary or front facing camera is a 5 megapixel sensor with LED flash also. Um, it does have everything else standard for any phone. Um, 2500 milliamp hour battery, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it uses micro USB, there is no NFC or any of the other extra stuff but that's basically it about specs. Um, so a run around the device is on the right side we have our volume up and down along with our power button. On the bottom we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and our mic. On the left side we have nothing. On the top we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the back, like I stated, we have our 8 megapixel camera, LED flash, rear speaker, blue logo, removable back cover. Front we have our standard headset. On the left top we have our 5 megapixel front camera and on the right side we have our LED flash. That's about it for the phone. Um, to jump right into it, there's nothing really special with this phone, you know, it's not a Galaxy, no special gimmick, none of that. Um, it's a straight in your face phone. For $60 you get standard phone, standard battery, standard everything, but most people would be focused on um, what is price per, per performance. So one of the main catches when you get the phone is the Amazon lock screen as we see here. Um, it's going to be here forever, for as long as you own the device. So as we see here, it is a full screen lock screen each time you lock and power on and off the screen, so from standby, your ad changes, when you do get notifications, the ads are smaller, but they will be there forever. Um, n nowhere else is there really any other Amazon bloatware. You do have special Amazon apps that are preloaded that you can simply uninstall. Amazon did not alter the UI in any way, so it is running standard Android M with the standard Google Play, well, the standard Google Launcher. We have um, the, what is it called? See what's new in Google now, so the tap feature to see what's on your screen and um, give you information that way. Everything else is the same, so our Messenger app looks exactly the same. Phone looks exactly the same. Chrome, camera, everything, you name it. Actually, the camera is the um, the uh, blue, I guess, camera. So settings are a bit different. You do have things like beauty mode. We can flip cam we can flip the camera around. Um, tinker with megapixel size, but it does take pretty good pictures. Nothing, nothing to blow you out of the world, but good enough for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else you use. Uh, speaking with gaming, two of the games I play are Fallout Shelter and of course Pokemon Go. It runs them perfectly fine. I also do use an iPhone as my um, daily driver so the only difference I notice in both of those games is that they load 
slower. You know, when you open the app, it's gonna take, give or take, 20, 15, 20 seconds more, but there's nothing else that would, that will really, there's no lag, none of that. With Pokemon Go, you do get overheating, but I do play with a few of my coworkers and all of us complain after about 15 minutes of playing that our battery overheats. Well, not our battery, our phone's overheating. Um, as for the battery, as I stated, it has a 2100 milliamp hour battery. Typically, any given day, I um, will unplug my phone at 8.30 in the morning and plug it back in the charger around 9 or 10 at night. So typically, it's out of cycle for 12 hours. I will include a few screenshots right here to just show um, what my typical battery life is like. Um, typically, I listen to music, play games, browse the internet, social media, emails. Um, I haven't had a single day where it's died. Uh, on average, 50% of battery life is gone. A little more, a little less. But battery life isn't terrible either. So I guess with all of that being said, overall, there really isn't a negative to the phone. Maybe the display is a negative if you want 1080 or 1440. That might be it there. But it's a well-rounded phone. Like I stated, visually I'm kind of reminded of a OnePlus X. Maybe a little less on the high quality build, but it's still nice looking. Uh, my only gripe is the plastic back. You can, you can kind of see it right here in the shot that it's kind of greasy, but you can clean it off. It does get a bit greasy and smudgy, same with the camera lens, but it's plastic. It's going to happen to any plastic phone. Um, other than that, everything else runs fine. The front will get smudged up just like any other phone. It'll charge just as fast, play just as fast. Um, just no high-end specs, you know, that's about it. Five, ten seconds here or there may add up, but for $60, I think it is a perfect buy. If you guys have any other questions about the Blue R1 HD, if you want to see me root it, install some custom ROMs, anything else about performance, just let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share, do whatever you'd like with it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks!